Today we're going to read Dot and the Kangaroo. It's a longer story than normal, so settle down and let's go. This is an ad adaptation based on the classic one novels by Ethel Pedley. Little Dot sat beneath the gum tree and burst into tears. She was lost and afraid. She had wandered through the bush for hours. Her legs were scratched and bleeding and her dress was torn. She's looking pretty sad there, isn't she? The day before, Dot had left home to collect grass for her rabbit. Be careful, her mother called. Dot turned and waved as she set off down the track. So there she is, she's got her, her basket. Mum and Dad are waving goodbye. But then the bush was alive with birds and animals. Under a log, Dot found a tiny marsupial mouse. Here it is. She put out her hand to touch it, but it hopped away. Come back, called Dot. I won't hurt you. But the mouse disappeared. Dot ran after it as fast as she could. But she didn't notice a big rabbit hole. She tripped over. Thud. Oof, look at that, she's fallen down. She rolled down to the bottom of the gully. There she lay quietly for a long time. Gradually she struggled to her feet, her head aching and set off. She didn't know if she was going further and further away from home. Look, she's running, she's obviously very scared. And now it was getting dark. An owl hooted. Hoot. And that's when Be Dot began running Soon she was too tired to go any further, so she sat under a gum tree and burst into tears. There she is, she's sitting down there under the gum tree. But look who's come up. Something touched her shoulder. <gasps> Dot screamed. Turning around slowly, Dot came face to face with a big red kangaroo. Her fear turned to curiosity when it began making strange noises as if it was trying to talk to her. Looks like a friendly kangaroo, doesn't it? Taking a bunch of strangely coloured roots from its pouch, the kangaroo handed them to Dot. She was so hungry that she ate them straight away. The animals called these roots the food of understanding. But Dot began to feel very strange. There were weird noises in her head. Then, can you hear me yet? asked the kangaroo. You can talk? cried Dot excitedly. The kangaroo sighed. <gasps> All animals can talk. It's just that humans can't listen. Now out of the bushes crept lots of small animals and birds. Why are you crying? they all asked. She is lost, explained the kangaroo, just like my own little Joey is lost, her eyes filled with tears. Come along, she said to Dot, hop in my pouch and we'll try to find your mother. Oh, look at that, there's Dot, she's hopped into the pouch of the kangaroo. Dot carefully climbed into the kangaroo's pouch, which was warm and snug, and then thump, thump, thump. Away they bounded. They travelled all day. At dusk they stopped by a water hole to drink, then settled down to sleep in the mouth of a cave. There they are. During the night they were woken by the mournful call of a mopoke. Go and call somewhere else, suggested the kangaroo. The mopoke was annoyed. No one appreciates good music, it muttered as it flew off. The kangaroo's sitting and protecting Dot, isn't he? Meanwhile, sorry, while Dot had been travelling through the bush, safely tucked in the kangaroo's pouch, her poor family, sick with worry, had organised a search. Her father, with the help of his friend Jack, had spent all day searching and calling searching and calling before settling down for the night. Her father gave one last call. Woo-wee! Echoed through the bush. There was no reply. There's Dot's father calling out. 
He must be very worried, mustn't he? The cave was warm and dry. But when Dot woke the next morning, something cold was slithering across her feet. Don't move. That's my breakfast, instructed a voice from above. Look, who's that? The kookaburra. And what's he watching? Looking there up, Dot met the bright eyes of a kookaburra. When she glanced down, she saw the slithering body of a snake. Help me, cried Dot. Just relax, came the reply. A split second later, the, kangaroo, the kookaburra swooped down and caught the snake in its beak. There's the kookaburra. He's having snake for breakfast. Yum, yum. Where's my kangaroo friend? asked Dot. But the kookaburra was already gone. Just then, the familiar thump, 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 and in bounded the kangaroo with berries for breakfast, and the news that the Grand Council of Animals was going to meet to help Dot find her way home. On the way to the meeting, they stopped at a billabong. There's a flock of brolgers, and they were there to greet them. We've come to dance for Dot, they said. That was nice of them, wasn't it? Keep her happy. Oh, look at that. Wow, they're doing a beautiful dance. The Brolgers' dance was magical. Dot couldn't help herself. She leapt up and joined in. At the end, they all curtsied and flew off. Dot settled back in the kangaroo's pouch and they continued on to the council meeting. Mmm, dear. But look, here they are. The weather looks like it's turning bad and not all the animals at the council were willing to help Dot. Humans never help us, so why should we help them? Little Dot is lost, just like my Joey. We must help her find her home, pleaded the kangaroo. Well, there's only one animal that can help you, said the emu. Go and ask the wisest of all, the platypus. There was a loud clap of thunder, lightning flashed, and the council meeting finished as everyone dashed to shelter from the storm. Look, they're all running away, aren't they? There's the... Well, I don't know what that is. What do you think that is? It's a parrot of some kind, bright yellow one. And the other birds all flying away, the little mouse, Dot and the kangaroo running to shelter. Dot and the kangaroo found a cave. None of the animals would go in there because it was a save, sacred to the Aborigines. Maybe they shouldn't have gone in either if it was a sacred cave but maybe they needed shelter, so. They're all scared of the bunyip, said the kangaroo. Dot didn't like the sound of the bunyip. The kangaroo took Dot further and further into the cave, showing her the rock paintings that the Aborigines had done. In, the one, in one corner, there was a large painting of a hairy bunyip with sharp teeth and claws. He seemed to come right out of the rock at Dot. Do you think it was a bunyip? Maybe they didn't understand what it really was. I wonder what the Aboriginal people had painted there so many years ago. The kangaroo took her back to the front of the cave, where they both settled down on the warm, sandy floor for the night. But there's lots of other paintings in the cave, aren't there? There's people sitting around a meeting place. So while Dot and the kangaroo were snug inside their cave, her father and his friend Jack shivered under a flimsy canvas shelter they'd erected. A child doesn't stand much of a chance out here, said Jack. It's dangerous at night. I know, said her father. We have to find her, quickly. Look at them, they've got a fire going, so hopefully they'll keep warm in the night. Early next morning, Dot and the kangaroo searched the bank of the creek where the platypus lived. Why are they the wisest of all the animals, asked Dot. Well, because they're part bird and part animal, explained the kangaroo. It's as if you're speaking to two creatures in one body. They waited quietly on the bank of the creek where it was there for a long time. Then out of the water came the platypus, the wisest creature of all. Goodness. Oh dear, but he was extremely grumpy. Hmm. He kept telling Dot that humans were stupid. They couldn't decide whether he was a duck or a beaver. When really, he was an ornithorhynchus. An That's a tricky word, isn't it? 
Latin words are very tricky. That's why humans can't say them very easily. The animals told me you know everything, said Dot, trying to calm him down. Can you tell me where my home is? Oh, of course I know everything, but I don't know your home, he said. And with that strange reply, he disappeared into the water. Oh dear, so no satisfaction there. What's going to happen next? Danger, danger, the cry came from the bush, growing louder and louder. Dot and the kangaroo spun around. Animals and birds were racing past them. Danger, humans, a wombat shouted as he charged past. The animal, the kangaroo helped Dot back into his pouch, her pouch. Let's go and find out what's upsetting everyone, the kangaroo said. They set off into the bush following a strange wailing sound. The noise was eerie, especially in the gathering darkness. As it's getting darker, they can hear some strange sounds. They don't recognise them. At the top of the hill, they stopped. The kangaroo lifted Dot out of his pouch and they hid behind a rock. In the clearing below, what an amazing and very special sight. Aborigines were dancing to the sounds of a didgeridoo. We must be very quiet, warned the kangaroo. We don't want the dingoes at the edge of the camp to hear us. Look at the dingoes. The dancers were acting the story of a kangaroo chase. Look at that. There's one man. He's got a kangaroo skin on and that's part of his, his dance costume. One Aborigine with a kangaroo skin was over him, was hopping around. And the others crept up with spears ready. It was all too real for the little Dot. She screamed. Immediately the whole scene changed as the dingoes charged up the hill. The chase was on. Oh no, look, there's Dot inside the kangaroo's pouch and they're heading off. Dot crouched low in the kangaroo's pouch as they pounded through the bush, desperately trying to outrun the dingo pack. Suddenly, the kangaroo skidded to a halt. In front of them was a deep gorge. There was no way around. They were trapped. The kangaroo paused. Then, only for a moment, it leaped right across the gorge. Look at that. Very strong jumper, that kangaroo. Oh, but the effort of carrying Dot was too much for the poor kangaroo. Look, it lay on the ground, absolutely exhausted. As Dot struggled to get out of the pouch, the dingo pack came over the edge of the gorge. Oh, please stand up, sobbed Dot, as she desperately tried to lift the kangaroo to its feet. The dingoes crept closer and closer. Suddenly, overhead, there was a great flapping of wings as a flock of birds swept down on the dingoes who turned tail and fled. That night, the birds kept watch over Dot and her exhausted friend. In the meantime, of course, Dot's father was sick with worry. By, the time, by now, both he and Jack were exhausted, having struggled for days through the bush. Now they needed to rest, and with very heavy hearts, they headed towards home. When Dot and the kangaroo woke the next morning, there was a willy wagtail perched on the tree above them. Hello, Dot, it said in a chirpy voice. I think I know where your home hat is. It has a big veranda. And roses? asked Dot. Yes, said the willy wagtail. That's my home, said Dot. Then let's take you there, said the kangaroo, settling Dot back into the pouch. All day they followed the willy wagtail. It was a long, hot journey. At dusk they reached the wooden fence and Dot climbed out of Kangaroo's pouch. Wait here, she pleaded. Then Dot turned and ran into the home. The kangaroo waited for a moment, then headed back into the bush. By the time Dot came back with her excited parents, only the willy wagtail was there. Dot called and called, then faintly, she thought she heard a chirpy voice saying, Don't be sad, Dot. Your kangaroo must keep her freedom. It wasn't that nice, the, the kangaroo and the animals helping the human. It would be nice if we could all be more helpful to each other all of the time. And that's the book, Dot and the Kangaroo. Hope you enjoyed it.